back to Mojo Grip Mike here guys. So one of the videos that's been heavily requested is aircraft maintenance. And today I happen to be here at the right time where several of the slings here at the Sling Pilot Academy is going through their annual. And you see one of the things you learn early on is that maintenance is one of the most important aspects of aircraft ownership because again if you're not checking your oil, your engine, making sure things are good you know then you're messing with your own safety so you got to be on top of it and for a lot of us especially someone like me I know I'm not the most organized person in the world and things can slip through the cracks so you need to be on top of this you need to be organized about it speaking of being organized today's video is brought to you by cold flight cold flight is an amazing platform that allows you to log in all of your records you can create new squat codes for your aircraft it notifies you whenever you have something due or maintenance due for your airplane and that way you don't have to worry about anything add new owners and members or even create a digital copy of your logbook you can log in your flight time log in the engine time for the aircraft and so on and so forth all of these features are available at the tip of your finger when you download the cold flight app you'll be able to have access and do all of these things with a mobile app make sure you check out cold flight today you can use the referral link to get 90 days free that's right if you use the referral code mojo grip you have 90 days absolutely free to vet this platform the website is coldflight.com so I want you to talk to me as a new aircraft owner or somebody who runs a, a maybe a, advice to yeah like what what does maintenance entail what would I be looking forward to in terms of my maintenance so okay Mike you know it's one thing to build the airplane you've got an engine which comes from the manufacturer that's been tested and run so your new unit is perfect it comes it's not gonna have any leaks it's not gonna have any problems because it actually has been test run at the factory you then install that on your beautiful airplane that you've built and the big trick there is your installation installation must be done perfectly because you can take a perfectly manufactured and test run engine and you can put that onto your sling and if you don't do the installation perfectly uh, and very diligently you can introduce all sorts of problems so first of all and we'll cover that perhaps at another time the installation when we do your build but um, if your installation is done and it's done your 40 hours of phase one flight testing and there's no problem uh, and you saw that any small problems that might have come up uh, you should have a very reliable airplane a reliable engine and the next most important thing is maintenance now maintenance on the Rotax engines, they are good for TBO of 2000 hours. The 915 will hopefully soon be there. And um, that means that your engine should, with good maintenance, reach 2000 hours without a problem. 99.9, if not 100% of our engines actually reach 2000 hours. And it's quite sad because we're gonna take this perfect engine and replace it. So essentially you've got two services that you're going to be involved with. One is a 50 hour oil change and the other is a 100 hour service. At a 50 hour oil change we very basically will drain the oil and we'll remove the oil filter and we'll cut open the oil filter to see if there's any particular matter in there that might be a bearing or something starting to break down and we'll take out a magnetic plug out of the gearbox which all the oil that passes through the engine and the gearbox actually go past the magnetic plug and if there's any chips or anything broken off a gear or any other parts will actually get stuck to that magnetic plug so as i was saying in the in the oil change basically the oil is the blood of your engine and you want to make sure that that's changed reasonably often if you're using um low lead you would normally change oil every 25 hours because of the lead deposits if you're using MoGas like we do every 50 hours, you would do an oil drain, which is very straightforward. You drain out there, and then you would remove your oil filter, which is there. You take that open off, you cut it open. We've got a special cutter. You cut it open, you take the paper out, and you look at the filter side, 
and see if you've got any particulate matter there that might be indicating a problem. That having been passed, you take out a magnetic plug here, which is actually, that's a magnetic plug. Now that there has a channel behind it where all the oil gets processed through the engine, through the gearbox, and all the oil passes past that magnetic plug. And if there's any chips or anything off gears or anything, it'll get picked up on, on that, and you'll have early warning of any possible problems. That's a basic oil change. Okay. Then every 100 hour, we do the same oil change. We do inspection of everything on the engine. And every 200 hours, we will change spark plugs. But even on every 100 hour, we remove the spark plugs and we put in what's called a compression check where we uh, put in compressed air, the differential pressure, differential pressure check, which is compressed air going into the cylinder. We measure the pressure that we put in and we have a small little valve that it goes through a small jet and we measure how much of that air pressure we're putting in gets leaked out. It can leak out. Again, we're looking for early indication of any potential problems. It can leak out through three places, either through an exhaust valve, an intake valve, or around past the cylinder. And in fact, if it's really bad, it might leak on your cylinder, cylinder head uh, seal. So if you get below a certain differential pressure check there, you would need then to open up and have a look and see. You can hear if it's an exhaust valve by listening in the exhaust, intake valve by listening in the carburetor, and if you listen to the oil, it'll be, and you hear air blowing through in the oil, you'll hear the air blowing past the pistons into the crankcase. I mean, there's quite a long list of things you go through on the, um, on the 100 hour. And that's why we use a checklist and we go off. But I'm just gonna talk you basically through it from the nose of the aeroplane. We'll check, we'll take, remove the spinner. You'll check on these propellers, which is just a ground adjustable propeller. You'll check the torque, all the torque on the bolts. You'll look at the clamping system that holds the blades. You look for cracks and that the torques are correct. Then you'll move through. You'll check your torque ratings on your propeller extension. So this is, this is working hard. You want to make sure there's never any, anything going wrong here. Any cracks or anything here could be quite detrimental to the enjoyment of your day. Um, and you look through for leaks for seals. You look th through, basically, you look at the condition of each system. So what, the way I like to do it is take the oil system, for example. You'll start here, once you've done all your, your, your your checks, uh, done your oil change, you would start here. Yeah, the system basically works. This is a reservoir, it's a remote reservoir for the oil, and you'll follow your line that goes where it comes out of the, the oil uh, reservoir. It follows along, and again, the good way to do any maintenance is systemic checks. So we'll start through, it follow that through, you've got no leaks, nothing loose here. It gets then pulled through the oil cooler and up along this side follows up along here, through, you'll notice I keep my finger on it to check the system, into the oil pump. So the oil pump is actually sucking the oil on a vacuum system from the uh, remote reservoir through the whole system. So if you had a leak here, the oil wouldn't squirt out, it would actually suck air in. Then from this point, the oil pump pressurizes it through the crankcase, through the big end bearings, back into the crank case and also off, and through the end of the crankshaft into the gearbox um, and then from the gearbox it runs through back into the crankcase and then blow by past your pistons actually blows the oil from this here like I say we follow the system from the bottom of the crankcase through this pipe back into the reservoir so you see there with my finger we walk the whole system through and that way you can check the whole system rather than just looking at stuff you actually follow systems then i would look at the yep then we have a look at the fuel system now on this the carbureted version we look where the fuel system the fuel actually comes through the firewall from the fuel tanks on that pipe it goes down through the electrical uh, auxiliary pump back up and we're looking all the time for leaks, for chafing of uh, pipes and things, through up here, through this line, into the fuel pump. From the fuel pump, it gets pumped back 
to the carburetors. On the way to the carburetors, it's got a T piece here with a valve. For any fuel that's not being used by the carburetors, it pumps that back to the return in the fuel tanks. That way it keeps the fuel system cool. This is a fuel flow monitor. That's the impeller that gets driven by the fuel flow. And that's what gives you your gallons per hour. It goes in through to the carburetors. That's a pressure readout to the, to the instruments. And that goes to the two carburetors. By having a look at it like that through the system, I've looked very clearly, seen no leaks. I've looked for any chafing. System's good. This is a very nice installation, by the way. It's done very neatly, nicely laid out. I really like it. Um, then you would look at your electrical system. Again, starting here, you've got two wires that run back to your ignition switches. Those would close a circuit to ground to switch your engine off so you don't want any of them rubbing rubbing through the ground so you would check those wires you check your CDI ignition which feeds into your high tension coils which sit underneath and then just look at wires things like this again yeah you're looking at an aeroplane that's got nearly 2,000 hours on very nicely inst installation done um, and you want to look and see if anything is wearing through. For example, if a wire like that was sitting on there, 2,000 hours of vibration is going to vibrate through. So you look at things like that. There are other things to look at with high hours. You've actually got a spring balance you put onto these spark plug caps and you pull it, it needs a certain amount of pressure. If it comes off, you've got to replace them. So um, a seasoned mechanic will be able to pull it like that and know that it's, that it's good to go. We've basically, we've been on the firewall now, firewall forward. The engine, things I haven't mentioned yet is cracks, very important to look for cracks. Although the sling manufacturing standards are very high, we don't find cracks ever in any structural parts. But you look, mechanical things can fail. But as to this, you know, I've looked at thousands of hours of flying of, of slings. Not once have I found any structural part cracked because they well designed, well manufactured, well quality controlled, and they over designed. So there's, we've had no no small cracks in developing from fatigue, but you always look for them. So that basically takes us to the firewall from the spinner to the firewall. Things that I haven't mentioned, obviously, like cracking propellers and that. There's a lot to look at, but. That all comes with your list that you get to do your inspection. Okay, that's great. Right, airframe is another whole thing. Um, I like to do, and this is a thing definitely personal, if you're doing personal maintenance, I like to wash the airplane before I start the maintenance. Because when you do that, you're finding cracks, loose covers, dents, stings, leaks. Um, so a good way is to start off by washing the airplane and cleaning it. It's also nicer to work on. Um, things you look at down underneath the wing here, you've got some covers that you remove um, there. There's actually a removed cover that's great that that's open. Let's have a look inside there. Um, if you look in here, there's a bell crank and when you move the control surfaces, um, you can actually see, there you can see how that works. You're looking again for any possible cracks, you're looking for seized um, uh, rose joints. We spray a certain spray on those so that they don't corrode and you check that they always got play on them and that there are no cracks on any of these brackets and things. Again, sling is very well designed and manufactured. We never find any cracks on that. Even on the high hours we've never found a crack on any of that. Um, and it's quite nice that this is left open so if you just have a look in there you can basically get to see all the workings and it's the the slings designed with the with the push rod system you can see the the silver push rods down there moving so it's a very nice system to be able to check and it's not like aircraft that have got pulleys and pull pulleys and cables and things it's it's an easy system to check and keep safe and keep well maintained check the avionics also yes so again we've got a checklist we go through um, you would you know there, there's two kinds of maintenance there's the personal maintenance when you you the builder and you the pilot and it's your personal airplane because as squawks develop or something goes wrong with the instrument you generally get it fixed but then you'll get something like 
an airplane like this in the school where there might be a small ungroundable squawk that develops and it carries on flying and the that gets listed on a job card when it comes into the into the workshop and the guys will switch on the instruments go through everything we'll check everything we'll check the ELT we'll check um, that the ELT is in fact working and that its battery is still in um, uh, not exp the battery has an expiry date and um, so we'll check all the instruments check the ELT we'll check um, the switches for example on the dashboard nothing's coming loose check all labeling check the brake check the throttle check the action of everything um, so yeah again we've got that long list that we go through and if you go through that you're going to basically check everything okay. if you do the work yourself if you get a repairman certificate and which you can do because you built the airplane um, you would be able to do your maintenance for let's run through basically the worst scenario an annual or a hundred hours service spark plugs you need eight spark plugs three bucks fifty each you need eight of them you need three quarts of oil you need an oil filter which is 20 bucks and really that is all that you do on a service and you're gonna go through in 2000 hours you're gonna go through 20 of those services so it, the cost of running these engines is really good because there is nothing else to do very seldom is anything if you have serviced well and you haven't abused your airplane you warmed up in the morning um, you're not going to spend much more than that on anything. You might get unlucky, get a, a radiator leaked or something, but even that, hardly ever. Most of our airplanes go through, and we work them hard here, go through 2,000 hours without any major components being replaced, both on the airframe and the engine. <laughs>